I'm Vicky Spratt, I's housing correspondent, and today I am in Greenwich to meet the area's local MP, Matthew Pennycook. He is also Labour's shadow housing minister. Housing is one of the biggest issues faced in Britain. We have the worst housing crisis on record. Labour have a big policy announcement that they think could ease the housing crisis. But given that we've not managed to build the homes we need, reform renting, or reform leasehold properly for almost a decade. How does he think a Labour government could succeed where the Conservatives have failed? Matthew Pennycook, you are Labour's shadow housing minister, the person tasked with coming up with a plan for what is now arguably the worst housing crisis in history. You've got a big announcement on what voters can expect to see in the manifesto. How will that help ease this crisis? You're absolutely right, we've got an acute and intensifying housing crisis and we have a plan, a comprehensive housing planning and land market reform <laughs> agenda to ensure that we get the homes built that we need. And part of that is uh, further reform of CPO compensation rules. And what this means in a nutshell is when development uh, takes place, a huge part of the pressure of development is the cost of land. So we've got to make further changes to CPO to ensure that the market price of land when we're assembling and bringing forward development uh, is based on a fair price. And who will be able to use these new CPO, compulsory purchase order powers? So we want a range of public bodies to be able to use them. At the moment, um, there is a discretionary power which certain public bodies can use if they come and say to the Secretary of State, please, please approve this site. But that's an extra layer of planning permission, like that slows down the system. So we want a range of public bodies to have the certainty of being able to use this specific power so that we can get more development across the country going, but also when development is taking place, we ensure that it comes with the affordable homes, the infrastructure, the amenities that communities need to thrive. So not just plunking homes somewhere with no roads, schools, doctor surgeries to serve them. Absolutely, and I think a, a large part of why a significant proportion of the population often takes issue with development is that what is being built is not good. It doesn't come with the infrastructure or amenities mm -hmm. that are required, whether they be GP services or schools. It doesn't come often with accessible public transport mm -hmm. to other local uh, conurbations. So yes, we've got to do better development. There's lots of ways you do that. Planning reform is one side of the coin, but CPO compensation uh, rule reform is another. So you have a target of 1.5 million homes over five years. Is there any money for planning? Uh, there is money for planning. We have already announced last year £25 million shot in the arm, if you like, in the early days to get the system working to get more planning applications through. That will be funded by a, uh, increasing the stamp duty surcharge on foreign buyers. But we need to look more broadly about how we plan for the planning workforce in the long run, how we make sure we're bringing skilled planners into the system. Because over the last 14 years, local authorities have seen the number of planning officers gutted, partly as a result of funding cuts. But the profession, if you like, feels very, I think, under attack and, uh, and unloved. And is there anything else that will sit alongside these reforms to compulsory purchase orders? We've got a huge package of planning reforms. We've got a, a bold uh, CPO compensation reform rules. In general, we want to see more homes being built in the right places across the whole country, more large scale new communities. And will that include building on the green belt? And you've talked about building, building on brownfield sites and prioritizing those for development. We do need to prioritize already developed brownfield land for development, um, but brownfield first, if you like, can't be brownfield only. We have to build on parts of the green belt and the government is already doing that. I think that's what's important to realize. The government is releasing large uh, swathes of the green belt, but it's in a chaotic and haphazard way often for speculative development, what we are going to take is a much more strategic approach and ensuring that when that development does come forward, it meets golden rules. So high affordable housing rates, good infrastructure, good access to nature. In 14 years of Conservative government, we've not managed to build the homes that are needed in Britain. What makes you think Labour could succeed where they fail? We're willing to make the choices that they're not, whether it's on CPO compensation uh, reform rules, which we're announcing, where they dip their toe in the water, but they've done it in a, in, a, in a way that hasn't worked. But we're also, if you like, willing to put in place a planning system that actually does what we need it to do. You know, there is no way to build the homes we need in this country by just building at a local level. We've got to build much more uh, large-scale new communities across the country. We've got to plan strategically for housing across the country and make another, a whole range of other series of interventions.